mornings with guidelines is a typical early morning start. <laughs> this was definitely no exception. Got up at five and met Morris and the camera guy and left to go get the uh, shiners. And I asked Morris, I says, well, how far we gotta go? He's just an hour. Hour? <laughs> so we go and it seems like it's a little ways to go, but we get our shiners, get back. And now the neighbors have breakfast for us. We never get that kind of treatment. It was amazing. <laughs> We're all having fun, drinking coffee and having some breakfast and now it's time. You know, I met Morris back, uh, shoot, probably 2002, shortly after I moved to Florida. Uh, he was working at a local tackle shop. And, um, you know, he was one of those guys that, um, you know, I'm in there looking for some gear and uh, he was the first guy to help me. And, you know, he knew my story right out of the gate. You know, moved here from Ohio to be a fishing guide. Great thing about these lakes over here in the St. Johns River headwaters, there are absolutely no docks, no houses on them. It's all wild. And it's all privately owned and state owned land. So the lake is in its natural form. I mean, you don't have wow. no, no man-made construction around. Not too often you get to see that. No, that's rare anymore in Florida. There's a lot of water stood here. A lot of water. There are, there are four lakes in this particular system. You have Blue, water, Blue Cypress Lake. Yeah. You, you have uh, Kingsville Lake. You have the Stick Marsh, Farm 13, and the new Headwaters Lake. It's all part of the St. John's River System Headwaters, and that, that's what we'll be fishing today. It's more than just throwing it out, yeah. just letting it sit. So we want them to go underneath it. When you give a line and keep your rod low, yeah. because you're fishing under that. If you hold your rod higher, set the hook up high or anything, okay. Okay. what's going to happen is you're going to snag immediately. You'll lose your fish. Right. So when, when the fish hits it and everything, you'll get tight on them. Reel all the way up tight till you feel the fish pull okay. the tip of the rod. And then if he's going right, set the hook left. I get that. Yeah, you know, and you know, set the hook from here to the side. Nice, hard, and don't forget to reel at the end of it. Okay. We want him to get right up in there. Now he's cooperating. He's going in the danger zone. He won't live to old age up in there. There was a side of Morris today that I got to see that, you know, when we were fishing a point, you know, there was no holding back on to what we need to do to make the day successful. And that's, that's what I like about that guy. Teaching is one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, I, I, I would rather see people learn and learn how to do things properly and proper etiquette, things like that, you know, instead of, Instead of just saying, oh, it's my secret, I'm not going to share anything with you. Gonzo. Find out where he's at. There oh. you go, Jay. Nice. There you go. Nice one. Hey, does it count if you get your shiner back? <laughs> yeah, but you have to fish with a dead shiner afterwards. No, <laughs> you're beating up the shiner. Come on. <laughs> Look at where he's hooked. Square to the button. Mm-hmm. Corner or button, that's where they hook them. I mean, it don't get, <laughs> it's about as solid in the button as you can get. Whew. Little chunky monkey right there. <laughs> hey, Dale. Yeah, he uh, pretty much destroyed that uh, shiner. The state actually b bought up a bunch of farmland and they built these lakes. You know, they put berms around them and filled them with water and let the grass grow in them. And now they're filters for the St. Johns River. So the Fort Drum Marsh feeds into these lakes and through a series of canals and everything, it goes from lake to lake. The grass filters the nitrogen out, the grass grows, the bass grow, you know, everybody's happy and the St. John's River is thriving. This is a 
good fish. A better fish? Not as big as I thought. He was around some weeds. Yeah. He's a good one. All of them are good, right? Oh, yeah. it's stretched in the string, buddy. Look at that. He didn't play around with it. No, he did. It was no sooner in there and gone. Moving to Florida, totally cutting off the freshwater side of things and sticking to saltwater, it's good for me, kind of good for the soul to kind of go back a little bit to that, kind of to the roots. And that's really what bass fishing is for. It, for me to go back and, and now spend some time with a guy that I've known for 18 years now, that I've never had the opportunity to fish with, you know, for me, guidelines is the ticket for that to happen. And I'm so happy it did. But I tell you, every day, saltwater fishing, it feels good to put that boat in that sweet water. Got her? Yeah. Right, clear? Yeah, I'm clear. All right. Stand down though. It's a good fish. That's why. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a real good one. We might want to net this one just for show. You want to net this one? I mean, this little is, bass? Is, is this a little one? <laughs> this is a little one. I don't normally net them that size. I mean, but you know, we might as well use a sprayable net. I mean, <laughs> that's what it's for. I mean, lead that big girl over here. We'll put her in there. There you go. That's Look at what that. I'm talking about. We ain't talking double digit or anything. I'll, I'll but... let you get it. It's a good one. Seven pounds. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'm saying seven pounds. Seven two? We'll seven go with that. <laughs> That's a pretty good guess there, Mark. <laughs> All right, I'll take her. There you go. Let that big girl go. Regardless of how much you fish, you can't know it all. And, and I think that's what, you know, as a guide, and I think a lot of people on the outside look and say, well, Jay fishes every day. There's clearly nothing he can, he can pick up little tiny bits in here. But honestly, that's one of the things I enjoy fishing with these other guys all around is because all these guys have different little nuances that make a difference in their game. And I was clearly in Morris's game today. He caught a pile of fish. He's just swimming around with him there. Just adjusting him in his mouth. There he goes. <laughs> Probably want to set that to the left. There you go, another good one. We're jacking some fives and sixes and, and pretty regularly. And you know, there are a couple things in my head. One, every cast I make, I'm thinking I'm gonna catch a 10 pounder. Well, it didn't happen. But every cast was 
good chance you're gonna catch a fish. We went through eight dozen shiners. If you're throwing artificial, you're not likely to catch that number. You know, the numbers are gonna be with a live bait. It's tough to beat. I don't care if it's freshwater or saltwater, but you can roll into a place with a live well full of liveness, <laughs> you're gonna have an absolute ball. For me to be out in these lakes, the, the coolest thing, and even Morris mentioned it too, and I, I was thinking about it throughout the day, is you don't hear any boats. All you can hear is the wind, the birds, and just gar and bass busting on the shorelines. Nature at its finest, that's what we step outside of our comfort zone and go have some fun. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to doing it again.